Since landing on Mars on January 3rd, 2004, NASA's rover Spirit has been dutifully fulfilling its mission to scout and study the planet's surface. Thing is, that mission, which just passed 1,000 Martian days, or SOLS, was originally planned for just 90 days. 90 days is sort of when the warranty expired, is the best way to look at it. We had a requirement that the vehicles last for 90 days, and so we built them sturdy enough, good enough, that we were confident that they would last for at least 90 days. That's like buying a new car with a 100,000 mile warranty, then driving it around the Earth more than 40 times. So how is it that Spirit, and in November, its twin rover Opportunity, have both lasted 10 times as long as planned? One is that we built good hardware, and, and we're proud of that. I mean, we, we built stuff that was able to last a very long time. But the main reason has been that we got lucky with the weather. Um, the, uh, the big thing that we thought was likely to kill the mission was going to be dust on the solar panels. Mars is a dusty place, and dust sells out of the atmosphere. Um, and indeed, the solar panels, which provide the electrical power for the vehicles, have gotten quite dusty. But on several occasions, we've had these lucky gusts of wind that have blown the dust off the solar panels and uh, sort of given us a new lease leaf on life. That extended life has given NASA ample time to study Mars, gathering evidence about the planet's surface on the hills and in the craters and shallow basins that may have once held ancient seas teeming with life. To mark the thousand-day milestone, the team assembled nearly 1,500 photos taken by Spirit as it sat on a small hill known as Low Ridge in the Gusev Crater area and created a panoramic view of the Martian surface. It's the highest resolution view of Mars taken by either robot. The photos, while serving as windows to the strange world, also act as guides for the rovers. We intentionally gave the cameras 20-20 vision. Okay, and when you ask yourself, if you're designing a robot to go to Mars to do geology, well, how good does a robot's eyesight have to be? Okay, well, we know that 20-20 vision works pretty well for geologists. So we decided to give our robot geologist 20-20 vision. And so we frequently will stop and take these panoramas, and we will use them to assess everything around us and, and to plan what we're going to do next. Squires said he has no idea how much longer either of the rovers may roam Mars before finally conking out. The way you predict how long a piece of space hardware is going to last is you do some tests. And, you know, we think we, we, these things were designed to last for 90 days. In order to convince ourselves that they really could do that, uh, we tested them, we tested all the components on board to three times that. Well, you know, today is day 1005. So we're, we're so far past any knowledge base that we have of how long the components might last. We're essentially doing lifetime testing on the surface of another planet now. And on such an inhospitable environment as Mars, there's no shortage of problems that could finally doom these seemingly indestructible robots. One way is that indeed we could get uh, enough, solar, enough dust on the solar panels that, that we can't function anymore. Another possibility is just mechanical parts wear out. There's an awful lot of moving parts on these rovers, lots of gearboxes and, and motors and so forth. It's something that the team is already starting to see. We have had a couple of components that have, that have given out on us so far. The rovers are, are operating just fine as it is right now, but if enough moving parts wear out, it could disable the vehicles. For Squires, one thing's for certain, and that's that when the robots finally do die, Mars should remain their final resting place. For Discovery News, I'm Jorge Ribas. Hi, we're the Discovery News video team, and we want your videos. Your science videos, to be exact. So if you're a student doing experiments at home, or a researcher in the field, 
And if you have a camera, you can capture those experiments and upload them to our website. It's pretty easy. Here's how you do it. Just go to this website below, dfc.discovery.com slash news slash sidewalk science. And if they get our Bunsen's burning, we will put them online and you will be recognized for the mad genius you really are. That's all I have to say.